gonna talk about a smarter way to automate. So I wanna start with a thought experiment. You're at work in your organization, they call a meeting, there's a new technology. It's extremely capable, it's gonna change everything about how work is done. Uh, in fact, it appears that it can do much of your job. Your organization is interested in cutting costs and they have no problems in cutting jobs to do that and you're concerned that you might be shown the door. I asked ChatGPT if it could do the job of a professor and it answered back, certainly not. Um, but it answered back, certainly not, with very thoughtful, well-reasoned, uh, and technically accurate arguments. So that makes me think. Okay, back to our thought experiment. The year is 1982, and General Motors just unveiled their plans for a factory of the future. It was going to run lights out, full of robots, almost no people. You could essentially shut the lights, and the robots would build the cars. This future did not pan out. It was a mess. So the robots were affixing Buick bumpers to Cadillacs and vice versa. The robots were painting each other instead of the cars, and the whole thing was scrapped. Fast forward 20 years, uh, 2002, technology has advanced. The Navy unveils their plans for a um, the littoral combat ship um, of the future. It's meant to be highly intelligent, highly autonomous, uh, able to be crewed with very few sailors. Um, this also, this dream also did not pan out um, after billions and billions of dollars spent. The goal was for it to be crewed by 45 sailors. Instead, it required 60 sailors. They required a higher skill level, a higher pay grade, and the work was made much more cognitively challenging, leading to burnout and turnover issues. So these are famous examples of what's called the autonomy paradox. As you introduce automation, you don't replace the human role, but you change the human role. This is what my colleague Ben Armstrong and I refer to as zero-sum automation. Um, when you introduce robotics or automation to replace the human's role, you reduce flexibility, impeding your ability to change uh, according to different requirements and different objectives. Um, you undervalue the human's role as a part of that, um, and you overlook the broader potential for automation. We can sidestep this track, uh, this trap, according to our research, uh, by, um, by uh, realizing what we call positive sum automation. Um, this is where we aim to do more than replace people. We design for automation and humans together to be able to increase our productivity and our flexibility. It's the goal of designing the human in rather than designing the human out. It requires a new approach to technology development, which is what I work on in my AI and robotics lab. It also requires a new approach to design of skills and training, and it requires new ways to make the business case for the technology. Now we're gonna leap forward 20 more years. The year is 2022. Somehow, across all manufacturers across the US, only one in 10 of those firms has a single robot. Um, the uh, firm's uh, implementation of robotics require very significant uh, cost. The systems are uh, relatively inflexible, and only the largest firms can make the business case and scale this technology. Small and medium firms lag far behind. So for positive sum automation, there are three principles here. The first is that uh, automation that can be flexibly tasked and directed by employees can accelerate innovation, and companies must invest in training to be able to build employees' independence in operating and experimenting with the technology. Second, a bottom-up approach is crucial. The employees that are closest to the process, they're the secret sauce for driving and achieving positive sum automation. Um, and from our research, um, uh, we know that you know, g and a small and medium firm, was successful at this. We have great success stories at large firms as well. And third, is that we need to make the case for um, these technologies differently. So the traditional metrics such as productivity fall short. We also need to be able to measure the practical flexibility of the machine, but also the ways in which the technology enhances performance um, and satisfaction of uh, the human members um, of the organization. And so, you know, to, to take us one step forward into 2023, back to our thought experiment, uh, you're in your office, your organization calls you into a meeting, there's a new technology they're gonna roll out, it's gonna change everything about how you do your job. Um, that new technology is generative AI. So where do we go from here? What does the future look like? And what I'll say is that we've seen this movie before. And if we can move beyond a lights out mentality um, and we can instead proactively envision a world in which these technologies enhance productivity um, as well as generate new jobs, we can achieve um, much more than we've been able to gain out of automation um, in its past incarnations. And so with that, 
Um, I invite you to join us at the Industrial Performance Center and the Work of the Future Initiative as we conduct our research and work with employers to study the ways that new technologies can lead to uh, more and better quality jobs. Thank you so much. Yeah.